Hi guys, good evening. Today we're going to talk about the drug atricurium and then a little bit about its stereoisomer cisatricurium. We're going to have a look at the presentation, mechanism of action, the usages and effects, some pharmacokinetics, and then as I said, a little bit about cisatricurium as well. If we start off with the presentation, atricurium is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drug. It's a benzyl isoquinolinium and it's got an intermediate duration of action. It's formed of 10 stereoisomers with four chiral centres, and as we said, one of those is cisatricurium itself. It's a clear colourless solution, and it's kept at 4 degrees C, which means it's kept in the fridge. The ampule concentration classically is 10 milligrams per ml, and in most hospitals you'll find the ampule sizes is either 2.5 mils or 5 mils. Intubating dose for atricurium is 0.5 milligrams per kg, and that gives you ideal intubating conditions in normally around about 90 to 120 seconds. When we think about the mechanism of action of atricurium, it works by inhibiting the actions of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. It competitively binds the alpha subunit of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor on the postjunctional membrane and therefore blocks the actions of acetylcholine. Predominantly, atricurium is used for intubation of patients for anaesthesia, but also intubation on the ITU. There's a number of common effects. Obviously, the most common and the predicted effect is paralysis. One of the things associated with atricurium can be histamine release. Um, depending on the speed at which you give the drug depends on how much histamine actually can be generated. If you get enough of a histamine release, you can get a blood pressure drop. You can get bronchospasm and you can get localised erythema and urticarial patterns around the site of infusion. If used long enough, it can also lead to critical care myopathy, although that's one of the slightly less common side effects. When we think about the pharmacokinetics of atricurium, it's metabolised in two main ways. It's metabolised by estrohydrolysis and Hoffman elimination. Estrohydrolysis essentially is hydrolysis via non-specific esterases, not specifically plasma colon esterases, just non-specific esterases. And that accounts for about 60% of the atricurium uh, metabolism. The main metabolite of that is lordanazine. Lordanazine is a um, glycine agonist. However, it's completely inert in nature. It has no neuromuscular blocking properties at all, and therefore is eliminated without any further actions. The second element of metabolism of uh, atricurium is Hoffman degradation or Hoffman elimination. This is essentially a spontaneous breakdown of atricurium within the circulating plasma. What that does is that, that also leads down to the formation of lordanazine but also aminoacylate. Both of these again are completely normal byproducts and they have no actions on the neuromuscular junction at all. The speed at which Hoffman elimination occurs is dependent on temperature and pH. Therefore, if you're hypothermic or you're acidotic, it slows down the ability for Hoffman elimination to continue. What this means with both of these is that um, metabolism of atricurium is independent of hepatic and renal function, which is important in people who've got CKD or where you're concerned about their ability to clear the drug. Lastly, we're going to talk about cisatricurium. It's one of the stereoisomers. It's a colourless clear solution. It comes in 2 or 5 milligram per ml ampules, and again, it's also stored in the fridge at 4 degrees C. Cisat is actually more commonly used on ITU as an infusion. It's got a slower onset time, and it has essentially the same pharmacokinetic profile as um, atricurum. However, there is less of the um, hydrolysis and more of the Hoffman elimination process that goes on with that. It's safe for use in all groups of patients. It's got a much lower uh, incident of release of histamine. And it has the ability to be used, um, again, independent of hepatic and renal failure. It's about four times as potent as atricurium itself.